Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 1.5. We're going to be solving equations with whole numbers. Uh, before we do that, we have to define a few terms. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is recall variables, the term variable. It just means that uh, we have a symbol that's holding the place of a number. Um, and sometimes that symbol, or most of the time, is a letter. You know, maybe it's x, y, or it's a or b. It's a, usually a letter. So the first thing we're going to define that's new is a coefficient. A coefficient is the value in front of any variable. And if we recall, when we covered multiplication, we talked about multiplication by adjacency. Since this value is in front of that, this indicates I have three x's, or three times x, whatever value x may be. In this example, I have 5 times y. The coefficient is 5. And when I figure out what y is, I'm going to multiply them together. So the coefficient is defined as the number multiplied by the variable, or the number in front of the variable. So here my coefficient is 3. Here my coefficient is 5. I have a variable of x and a variable of y. And that's why we had to review what a variable was. All right, <clears throat> the next term is a constant. A constant is just any number. A single number, 5 is a constant, 16 is a constant, 24 is a constant. So anything that's just a number, we call it a constant. That's its definition. We're also going to be solving equations, so we should define equations. An equation is a statement of equality. Every equation has an equal sign. An example of a statement of equality is 5 plus 9 equals 14. This equation, which has that equal sign, is a true statement. 5 plus 9 is, in fact, 14. So that is the definition of an equation. A solution is when we have a variable in an equation. And the solution is defined as the number that would replace the variable to make the equation true. If you look at the example I have here, I have 5 plus something x equals 14. x has to be 9 because 5 plus 9 is 14. So the solution, by definition, is x equals 9, because that would make this a true statement. So the solution is the value that is equal to the, our variable, the value we're going to replace in there. And when it comes to replacing variables, we call that evaluating. If I'm going to evaluate a solution to an equation, uh, what, essentially what that means by definition to evaluate means put in one value for another. Do a substitution. So this asks me to show that 4 is a solution to the equation. So I'm going to substitute 4 in for my x value. So I'm just going to draw a little arrow. I'm going to put 4 in there. 4 plus 6 instead of x plus 6 equals 10. And then we simplify. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 equals 10. Well, that's a statement that doesn't get any more true than that. 10 is 10. It is what it is, is the statement we're always looking for in math. All right, so we evaluated x for 4. We found out that's a true statement. This one says, show that 6 is not a solution to x plus 6 equals 10. So I'm going to show by substituting, evaluating this. 6 plus 6 equals 10. I just evaluated this x, took it out, put 6 in its place, evaluation. 6 plus 6 is 12. Does 12 equal 10? Obviously not. These are two different constant numbers. They're not equal to each other. So I can say, look here, 12 is not equal to 10. So no, this is not a solution. So here I have a question for you to answer independently. It asks, is 5 a solution to the equation x plus 17 equals 22? So evaluate this for 5 and tell me a yes or no statement. Go ahead and try that on your own. And uh, hopefully, it makes sense to you. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is how do we solve equations? If we're not given an, uh, a value to plug in or to evaluate, we have to use some properties of equations in order to solve them. And the first three we're going to look at, um, essentially, what we're going to look at is if two values are equal, a equals b in this case. If I add a value to a, I have to add that same value to b. 
Because when it comes to being equal, what you do to one side of this, you have to do to the other so that it stays balanced, so that it remains being equal. So a and b are the same number. If I add something to a number, I have to add it to that same number. The same thing goes for subtraction. If a equals b, if I subtract a value from a, I have to subtract that same value from b in order for this to be true and remain equal. And if a equals b, the same thing applies for division. And just a further note, it also applies for multiplication. What I do to one side, if I multiply it, I have to do to the other. So that's essentially what we're saying. No matter what operation you do, whether it's addition, subtraction, or division, maybe even multiplication, it, what you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. So these are the properties that we're going to utilize in order to solve for the variable, to find the solution to an equation. So let's look at some examples. Here I have x plus 5 equals 14. Now, I have addition here. And one way to address any equation is to think about its opposite operation. I look here and see, well, I have addition. So what can I do to this side of the equation to undo this addition? Well, I can use subtraction. If I subtract 5 from this side of the equation, I'll get my variable all by itself. And that's essentially our goal, figure out what is that value. Well, to do that, we get it by itself. But I have to remember those the properties of equality. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So I see an addition of 5. I'm going to take 5 away from both sides. So 5 minus 5 is 0. x and 0 is just x. 14 minus 5 is 9. And as we've seen earlier in the example, x equals 9 because 9 plus 5 is 14. That's a true statement. When it comes to finding solutions, it's so important to go back and check your work. And how you do that is evaluate, just like we talked about. Plug that value back in. Is 9 plus 5 equal to 14? Yes, it is. So we know that x equals 9. Now here, we do a little assessment. There's no addition or subtraction. But if we recall, what does this mean? Well, if we have a coefficient adjacent to a variable, that means multiplication. So I have multiplication here. I can undo multiplication by dividing. So I'm just going to divide by the coefficient, not the variable, just the coefficient. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now, 19 divided by 19, well, any number divided by itself is 1. 1y one is just y. And we don't really need the 1 there, because if I say I have an x or if I say I have a y, you assume I have 1. So if I just put y here, you assume I have 1. So I don't need that coefficient. And then we do the math over here, 38 divided by 19. Well, how many times can I subtract 19 from 38? That repeated subtraction is division. 38 divided by 19 is 2. So let's check our work. We found a solution. How do I know it's true? Well, if I go back to the original problem, 38 equals 19 times y. 2 times 19 is 38. Well, that's a true statement. 38 is 38. So I've checked my work. I know this is the solution. And I can't be wrong. And that's a good feeling to know you can't be wrong. I wish my wife and I would have that interaction, but I'm usually wrong. All right, let's look at this example here. 2x plus 3 plus 5 equals 20. Well, here's an example where we can do a little bit of simplifying before we try to attempt to find out what x is. I can actually do this math. I can add 5 and 3. So I'm going to do that right now. 5 and 3 is 8. So I have 2x, and I'm going to add 8 to that value. So I didn't do anything different to either side. I just combined my constants into one single constant. Now I can solve it just like I did this one here. I can subtract 8 from both sides, because I see this addition of 8. My goal is to get x, or the variable, all by itself. So I'm going to subtract 8 from this side, subtract 8 from that side. 8 minus 8 is 0, so I have just the 2x here. I just move it down, because 2x and 0 is just 2x. 20 minus 8 is 12. Now I'm going to write it over here, because I'm short on space. 2x equals 12. Well, now I notice after that simplifying and uh, subtracting from both sides, I can see I have the operation of multiplication. I can undo that 
using division. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Well, again, we have that unit of 1. That's what we're trying to do is have that coefficient of 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 1x is just an x. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. So x equals 6. Well, how do I know that's true? I can go back to the original equation, plug it in, and check it. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 plus 5 is 20, a true statement. So I know that x equals 6. All right, here I have three examples. I want you to try all three on their own. You can always review back to these because they're very similar. Here I have w minus 8 equals 4. So I can say, hey, I can do some operation to get w by itself. Here I have 2u equals 14. I can find u if I undo this operation here. Uh, and this one here, well, I can do some combining of terms before I begin uh, subtracting or adding from either side of the equation and then that division, just like we did in this example. So try these three on your own. And uh, good luck, and thank you for watching.